I'll first start off with why you would use shotgun slugs and sabos for hunting deer. Many states have laws that prevent you from using rifles to hunt deer. This is due to the concern that rifle bullets can travel a long distance and might kill or injure someone. Shotguns are viewed as much safer because their rounds don't travel so far. This theory might seem plausible, but the reality is different. In my opinion, if a person gets killed accidentally by a stray round fired by a hunter, that will be because a hunter pointed his weapon in an unsafe direction and fired, not because of how far that bullet will go. That hunter will be held responsible, not the bullet. Now that we know these things, hopefully in the future we can change the laws to stop needlessly limiting hunters to shotguns. Time to talk about ammunition selection. I asked a deer hunter to rank the importance of these factors for choosing ammunition. Of course there are other factors, but I wanted to keep this part simple. This is a chart of shotgun ammunition accuracy. The numbers on the left is the small group average, followed by the average size of all of the groups. Both are in inches. I'm sorry if this looks like the dreaded wall of text. This information comes from Outdoor Life's 2008 article, Slugging It Out. Also, the MR stands for Managed Recoil. If you look at the bottom of this chart, the Winchester Rackmaster is a Foster style rifled slug, as opposed to the rest, which I believe are all sabos. This chart is the same, but it's for 20 gauge. I include 20 gauge specifically because a lot of people use 20s for the reduced recoil and lighter weight. This chart is the accuracy of slugs tested in the Guns.com article, Slugs for Self-Defense, These Shotgun Rounds Rock. When all is said and done, you need to see what shoots best in your shotgun. It doesn't hurt testing the cheaper stuff for accuracy first, because cost doesn't guarantee accuracy. I've read many comments and forum posts about how effective or ineffective certain shotgun rounds are. All of the opinions and experiences about shotgun rounds contradict each other and are essentially useless. Forums likely give a distorted view of the subject where a survey of hunters would give better results. Shooting into ballistics gel and water jugs is much more useful when comparing rounds. This is why I will only use others' experience only to confirm or disprove what we learn through gel and water jug tests. First of all, ballistics gel is obviously better than water jugs at representing flesh. Water is harder on bullets than ballistics gel, but so is bone. I would also like to say that there is no way to make a conversion system to match water jug penetration directly into inches of ballistics gel. Second of all, there is some disagreement about whether it's best for the bullet to stop in the deer or pass through it. We have an article called Effective Game Killing to shed some light on the subject. Now that we know we need a bullet to pass all the way through, we can set some standards. A broadside shot on a deer can be expected to pass through over 18 inches of flesh before it exits. Let's say over 18 inches penetration of ballistics gel should be our minimum. 
Deer can be larger and some shots require more penetration. So over 24 inches is what we'll call ideal penetration. So after comparing water jugs and ballistics gel with this chart, I can create standards for water jug penetration. Also, there is a video that I use as a source that used water jugs that I estimate to be about half gallon. All other videos use the standard one gallon milk jug. Here we have the standards for penetration. But first, a disclaimer. We can now start comparing the expansion and penetration of these rounds. First, we have the Winchester XP3. This is a really good round. It has both ideal penetration and excellent 0.962 expanded diameter. Here is the Winchester Partition Gold. When shot into ballistics gel, it didn't expand. This can be seen in GY6's video about it. On that video, there were people in the comments section saying that the Sabo didn't expand because he didn't use a rifled barrel, which caused the round to tumble and not expand because it hit sideways. This is very easy to disprove because the second round was clearly pointed in the right direction. When bullets tumble, they generally end up pointed backwards because the rear of the bullet is heavier. What caused these rounds to not expand was the way Winchester made them, as a comment below supports this conclusion. Now for light field slugs. The following slugs were shot into water and fragmented because of it. Light field bucks, boars, and bears. 3 inch max EXP Sabo and the Lightfield IDS 3 inch Commander. Only the Lightfield Hybrid EXP didn't fragment. We also have an article to support the evidence that Lightfields tend to fragment. One person who used hybrid EXP Sabos said that they fragment and don't pass through the deer, even if the deer only weigh 35 pounds. He said that the lack of pass-through made for very little blood trail and the fragmentation led to ruined meat. Interesting, because the hybrid EXP didn't fragment in water. The same person also said that the Hornady SSTs fragment and don't pass through. I have seen no evidence that this second claim is true, so you be the judge of this. Finally, we have a description of Lightfield EXP slugs that says that they are made for maximum expansion and says specifically that they won't pass through. Seems all the evidence points to the fact that light fields are prone to fragmentation. Now for Hornady's SSD slugs. I unfortunately don't have the expansion, but you can get an idea from this picture of how much. They have a 50 caliber diameter to begin with. They are very good at penetrating deep, exceeding the ideal penetration standard. Also, hunters I've spoken to find them to be effective. Remington Copper Solid Sabos both meet the penetration minimum and have great 1 inch expansion. Remington Slugger Rifled Slugs don't meet the minimum penetration. They have 0.85 expansion. The managed recoil version has little or no expansion, but they have ideal penetration. 
The Remington Premier Expander both meets the minimum penetration and has a good expansion of 0.811 inches. Winchester Super X is prone to overexpansion, which leads to fragmentation and underpenetration. Fragmentation occurs both in gel and water, but doesn't happen 100% of the time. This problem seems like it gets worse when you use the 3 inch shells. They don't penetrate deep enough even when they do stay together. Winchester deer season do better than the Super X at staying together, but part of the slug still broke off when shot into water. They don't penetrate deep enough just like the Super X. Brennachy Black Magic Short Magnum is just under the ideal penetration standard if you use an 18 inch barrel. If you use a barrel much longer than 18 inches, it'll likely have ideal penetration. It also has good expansion at 0.82 inches. But what is the most impressive about this round is that it had ballistics gel tearing apart like you had shot it with a rifle round over 2100 feet per second. This didn't happen to any other slugs I've seen tested. It's quite impressive. They no longer make the short 2 and 3 quarters inch version of this round only the 3 inch version, which I'm sure is even more effective. I've seen this round called Brennachy Classic Magnum, Royal Brennachy, and Brennachy R10. I could be wrong, but I believe they are all the same round. When shot out of a 22 inch barrel, they have ideal penetration and 0.85 inches of expansion. Out of an 18 inch barrel, they're just under the ideal penetration standard. The Brennick EKO just barely meets the minimum penetration and has expansion up to 0.9 inches according to Brennick's website. I'd say use them only if you have a relatively long barrel to get the most penetration. The Hornady Monoflex Superformance meets the minimum penetration and may be capable of ideal penetration. It had 0.853 inches expansion when shot into water. The Hornady American Whitetail Interlock Slug doesn't meet the penetration minimum, so I wouldn't recommend using it. The Browning BXS Slug meets the minimum penetration. Unfortunately, I don't have the expansion for it, though. The Federal Trophy Copper 3-inch Sabo Slug didn't meet the penetration minimum. Federal Tactical True Ball has an inch to an inch and a half of expansion, depending on if you use the 1300 or 1600 feet per second rounds, neither of which penetrate deep enough to meet our requirements. Federal Power Shock Rifled Slug has expansion of 0.981 inches. It also doesn't meet our penetration requirement. Finally, the Federal Premium True Ball has expansion of close to an inch and a half when shot into water. The slug broke in half during that test. Also, it doesn't meet the minimum penetration requirement. Federal True Ball Deep Penetrator far exceeds the ideal penetration requirements, but at the cost of no expansion. This isn't much of a problem due to the original diameter being enough. Remington Accutips don't pass through deer. I have others' experience and pictures as proof, not water jugs or gel. There was a poster on a forum that stated he had seen three deer shot with Accutips, None were pass-throughs. On a different forum post, there were pictures of a 20-gauge AccuTip slug that didn't pass through a buck. The original diameter for 20-gauge Sabos is 45 caliber. Also on the video, Awesome Deer Hunt Remington AccuTips Slugs, you can see that the round didn't pass through the doe. 
I can't really make a chart about availability, but I can make a chart that compares expansion, penetration, and cost. These prices are all from the same website. Also, I would very much appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. And here are all my sources.